What's up everybody, this is Brogar. I'm gonna be talking to you guys about the ZH-29 today, which is a semi-automatic designated marksman rifle in Battlefield 5's recon class. I've actually played this with this weapon a whole bunch. I'm like level 10 with it, so I have the most mediocre skins you can imagine with it, and I feel really good about that. But overall, the gun actually is pretty good in the right hands. I said that about my last video, in my last video about the SMLE, but this is true for this one as well. It's obviously a little bit different than some other sniper rifles, especially the bolt action sniper rifles. The bolts, you know, can one tap you and shoot you in the face and, you know, end your life and make you feel bad. But, and this gun cannot do that. This gun does not have a one shot headshot damage output. So obviously that's a, that's a big difference, but you know, it's hoping to make up for that, the lack of damage output that it can do with having five extra bullets that you, get, that you can shoot in short succession. So I'm going to be getting into the statistics of this gun. I'm going to be getting into some metrics for how it stacks up uh, in terms of its kill potential, multi-kill potential, and uh, how it works at range. And then also how that kind of stacks up versus your other bolts, bolt actions and, and uh, DMRs in Battlefield 5. Overall, my experience with the gun has been pretty pretty good. If you're good at tracking a moving target, I would say it's pretty good. And overall, that would kind of be my thesis for this weapon. It's like that this gun will kill moving targets better than a bolt action sniper rifle. So first, I'm actually going to throw up all the statistics for all the sniper rifles. And I think I'm gonna do this for all sniper rifle comparisons in when I do these videos because I just want you guys to be able to quickly see when you replace the weapon the stat differential between this gun and all the other snipers so let's throw those up right now so here we have the ZH-29 versus the Lee Enfield and in terms of damage it's a little bit less damage overall in terms of Accuracy, it has a little bit less accuracy. Hip fire is pretty much irrelevant here. And control is also a lot better on the Lee Enfield. Granted, I would anticipate that for bolt actions a little bit more. So you can anticipate a little bit more sway, a little bit more movement in the scope when you're ADS on the ZH-29. Rate of fire clearly is about two, a lot better on the ZH-29. It's about two times as fast shooting when it comes to uh, putting rounds down range. The magazine capacity is pretty different between these guns, but one is got to pull a bolt every time you shoot. The ZH-29 doesn't. You just go tap, 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 and hopefully you kill six people. But you'll learn when you're shooting this that's not going to be the case. Even if you get bangers and hit headies all day like a pro, you're not going to be getting one-shot headshots like you would with the Lee Enfield. When you compare the ZH-29 to the Model 8, you have the ZH being beating it in every metric except for the rate of fire. It's more higher damage, better accuracy, better control on the ZH-29, but it is not a faster shooting weapon. The Model 8 has 180 rate of fire, whereas the ZH-29 has 150. Comparing the ZH-29 to the Guerin M95 is very similar to comparing it to any other bolt action or like the Lee Enfield that we already looked at. Damage, accuracy, control, all better on the bolt action, but the rate of fire is about a third as, a, as fast shooting when it comes to putting rounds out range. So the DMR ZH-29 is going to be able to shoot faster, but you know, there's that trade-off. When comparing the ZH-29 to the Craig Jorgensen, the uh, damage is pretty much the same. Accuracy is about the same as well. The control of the Craig Jorgensen is far superior than that of the ZH-29 though. Again, the rate of fire is about a third of as much. It's much slower shooting because of the bolt and the ammunition capacity is about the same. The RSC is another self-loading rifle that when compared to the ZH-29 has Worse damage, worse accuracy, and worse control, but has, again, an increased rate of fire. Seems to me like some of these self-loading rifles are really going to come down to whether or not you like how they feel, but also seems like the ZH of all the self-loading rifles is going to hit harder than the other ones. 
And the last weapon to compare to is the Car 98K, which you are not allowed to shame me for not having unlocked. I'm sweating my ass off right now trying to get this goddamn gun, guys, so just chill for a second. But it does not have as good of damage as the K9. The accuracy is barely better on the Car 98, and the control is pretty much comparable. Same thing, per usual, seems like. Bolt actions just operate and function much different than these DMR class weapons. And I think the greatest difference you're gonna see is when you're shooting somebody in the face with a K9 or Lee Enfield, doesn't matter what it is. If it's a bolt action, you're gonna get a one-shot headshot. ZH29 is gonna to fail to deliver that beautiful feeling to you. So if that is something that you're scared of, be aware of that. So a short reintroduction to the metrics I'm using to judge weapons in Battlefield 5. Kill potential over time, which is essentially just how much damage and how many kills you can get over over the course of the game, pretty much. If you can do that very quickly with this gun in playing it in the way that it's kind of designed to play, then it's going to have a, a, a strong kill potential, especially for a fragger. The next metric is multi-kill potential. So can you string multiple kills together? It doesn't matter in this case if it's at range or if it's close but can you string multiple kills together very quickly without having to reload with this gun? Uh, after that is range effectiveness, which is essentially, you know, where is this gun going to be good at in terms of its range? Where do you want to be sitting in? Uh, what, what type of placement do you want when you're fighting with an enemy with this, with this gun? And then the last metric we're going to use is efficacy at the combat role. So that's going to be the recon class, either sniper or pathfinder type of class, and how this gun can help you play those classes more effectively, essentially. So for kill potential for the ZH-29, I'm gonna give the gun two out of three stars, and that's for a couple of reasons. It's gonna get two stars because it works at a, at a couple of different ranges really well, and you, you can essentially shoot it very similarly at the medium long as well as the, the short medium ranges. You, it, the way you play the gun doesn't change at all. For the most part, the gun's ability to take down anybody moving or anybody in two shots makes it pretty consistent. If you can hit two taps on just about anyone, just about anywhere on their body, you're gonna get frags for that. So for those reasons, it's gonna get two stars. It's not gonna get the third star because it cannot get one-shot headshots, which is the biggest deficit of this gun. It can do it if the enemy is weakened, but for the most part, you have to kind of uh, rely on the fact that you need to continually shoot bad guys in order to in order to get frags with the gun When it comes to multi-kill potential, I'm gonna give the ZH-29 two out of three stars as well And that's for a couple of reasons. The first one is that When you compare it to other DMRs It has as many bullets as them, but can do more damage per shot So if you hit your shots with this gun, you're gonna kill more people over time or back to back in this kind of capacity than other DMRs can, period. When you compare it to other sniper rifles though, it, it can do better at multi-killing, but that's when you compare it to other sniper rifles that have five to six bullets before they have to reload and have slow lever action on the bolt uh, or bolt action, slow bolt action. So. Guns like the Lee Enfield or something that has a, a large capacity to shoot and a fast bolt action are probably going to have better multi-kill potential as a sniper rifle because of the one-shot headshots. When it comes to range effectiveness, I would say the gun deserves two out of three stars again, and that's because it's pretty good at long range and it's, it's very good at medium range. Closer ranges, it's fine, but it's not going to get a star for close combat. When it comes to fighting at long range, the only concern that I would have with this gun is the fact that you have to hit somebody twice, almost always, especially if you're in a in a sniper fight with somebody with a bolt action, you need to hit them two times to the, their one time hitting you in the head. So you gotta be very cognizant of that if you're gonna take a long range sniper fight. When it comes to medium range combat, this gun, can you can just keep putting rounds down range and just not even aiming for the head for the most part because you can just hit them anywhere. So it can really put a beat down 
on some idiots that are trying to push a point that you're defending. So when it comes to efficacy at the combat role, the ZH-29, I'm going to give one star. And I thought about this for a while. There's a primary reason why I think that it doesn't at least get to two stars. One, this gun is not going to be the best sniper rifle in, the, in a great player's hands. A great player with a bolt action is going to do a lot more damage. Because you can click and pop heads, period. You're going to get more kills with that. So as a sniper combat role, it will never beat a good bolt action in a good player's hands. Two, when attacking, you really don't often have time to take consecutive shots unless you're just way at the back and just chilling. Or you have some kind of great cover, but really don't have much angles. And the result of that is you're not going to help your team very much if you're just sitting in these back positions on an attack in like grand operations or something and just taking pot shots at people all day with the dmr it's 100 percent going to be a bad setup for you to one help your team and win the game and two frag out you're not going to frag out in that type of setting bolt action is going to be a better a better gun for attacking because a lot of the times defenders are going to be sitting stationary and peeking cover and they're gonna think that they have this sweet spot and then you just, you know, blap them right over the top of the, shoot right over the top of their helmet, drops right into their eyeball and they're done. In terms of why I would give it a star, I think it's a good defender sniper rifle and I think it's a good run and gun type of sniper rifle. It allows you to pressure people that are already under pressure very, very well. You can often just clean up whole squads of people if you just one tap people that are already taking some fire, taking some hits. Generally, I would reserve this gun's role to a defensive DMR. So when it comes to fun rating, I'm going to give this one star. And that is because I do not like hitting a sni an enemy sniper in the head first and then getting shot in the head by them after. It feels really bad to trade headies with some bad guy across the map and not get the kill when you sh when your target acquisition was much faster than theirs. So for that reason, I it's just straight up going to get one out of three stars. It's fun when you're on defense and these people are running all over the place and you're just two tapping people like it's your job. That's fun. But in comparison to bolt actions, it doesn't give you the feeling of satisfaction that you can get from the recon classes other guns. It just doesn't. And I have a feeling I'm going to feel the same way with all the self-loading rifles. I kind of feel like I would rather just be using something like an SMLE on the assault class. Okay, everybody, that's it for the ZH-29 guide and review. It's definitely helping me figure out how I want to deliver content in this capacity to you guys. And I'm really interested in getting feedback from you guys on the types of things that you're interested in getting kind of a little bit more of an in-depth analysis on. So far, my thoughts are uh, how to attack certain maps, how to play certain classes in the game, and then as well as the weapons. Drop me a comment below if you have any input for me or if you even just liked the video. I'd really appreciate any of that. Hit subscribe if you want to continue to check out videos like this mostly on Battlefield 5. Thanks, everybody.